What's up guys, VD Engineering here and in this video I'll be talking about a supersonic airfoil CFD and how to, to simulate this flow over this type of airfoil in the design problem as you can see here. It's covered in part 1 in more detail. I do highly recommend you watch part 1 first where I go over the mathematical calculations of this airfoil and I cover the theory as well. In part 2 however, we'll be focusing on just the CFD. So. In the CFD, we'll be analyzing an oblique shock and an expansion wave as the flow goes over this airfoil at the Mach number of 2.0 as specified. So now let's move on to ANSYS and let's begin our CFD simulation. Go into your geometry and make sure that it is set to two-dimensional. And, and when you have done that, you can then import your geometry from any CAD software or you can make it in ANSYS itself with the design modeler feature. So now I'll be making a few lines, but first set your geometry to fluid because it's a CFD and not an FEA. And now I'll be going over my XY plane and making a bunch of lines over there. The idea is to create a bunch of lines because we can split the domain up into multiple pieces, which makes the meshing process a lot easier. The idea is that we'll be using a structured mesh because for this geometry it is quite simple. And a structured mesh is a lot more accurate because it is simple to make. It does save a lot of time as opposed to an unstructured mesh and we can fine tune it more carefully. This is my final mesh which I want to achieve. So you can see that the lines are over there. So my, I have my lines made over the airfoil and then I can make my face split feature. The face split feature essentially lets you split your domain up into multiple sections so you can mesh them separately. And I have my face split over there. I'm using my line selection filter to select my line and then hit apply to create my first face split. Likewise, I'll be doing this for all of the faces or and lines to create multiple geometry for my domain. And once I've done that, then I can move on to meshing, which is the next step. So here you can see my domains are being split up into multiple faces. So let's go into mesh and then now hit generate mesh to get your mesh. And the mesh is quite coarse now because of the fact that it's not been refined yet. So let's do that now. Let's go on proximity and curvature. Set the maximum face size to about five millimeters and then hit generate again to see your mesh. And let's go into face meshing. So hit tools face meshing and then hit apply on each face. The idea is that we'll be splitting up each face and meshing that separately. So you can see it being done there. Let's go into sizing and then now apply an element sizing. So I do have one example here. For geometry, select your line selection filter. So select that line, hit apply. And then for your element size, go on number of divisions and then set your divisions there. I have 40 for my example. Set behavior to hard because you will make, make it concrete. And then from that, you can hit apply and then you can see your elements. So likewise, I'm doing this for all the lines which I've made in my geometry feature. So you can keep on doing this up to your setting. I do add a bias because the bias lets you set the boundary layer more accurately and the bias feature is important because it, it allows you to set the mesh skewness and the angle of the density near a specified object so it does helpful it is quite helpful so i'm doing this for all my faces in, in a similar manner you go on tools mesh control mesh sizing go into number of divisions and then you can create your mesh so now i have my mesh made over here with that sizing feature and now I can check my quality by going into mesh metric and then element quality. The average value is seen over there as 0 0.59, but we need to uh, we need to make it above 0 0.6 to get satisfactory results because that is like a standard by ANSYS or by any CFD program out there. So here I'm, I'm looking at my aspect ratio. You can see that the boundary layer over there is quite skewed. So I'm going to go back into my element sizing and change the elements in order to make the mesh very accurate. The quality tells you how skewed the mesh is. So if it's a very high aspect ratio, it will not be of good quality. The mesh needs to look like a square or a cube as much as possible. And here I'm simply changing my features to make sure that works. That's my final mesh. And then you can see that my elements sizing is shown over here. Let's now set my name selection. So select the outer faces and then right click on that. Press name selection and then go into set your name over there. So I selected far field because it's going to be a pressure far field and do the same for my airfoil as well. So select that and select wall. So I'm going to call it foil wall for this example. Going, going to setup, hit double precision. If you have two CPUs, hit parallel and then hit okay. 
So now when we're in there, set your energy to on. Briskus to K epsilon. And then also set your uh, your flow to ideal gas. Make sure it is density based and not pressure based. Set it to ideal gas and then set your viscosity to Sutherland because of the fact that the flow is compressible and you will need to make sure that this is the case. Boundary conditions go into pressure far field. Hit your Mach number as 2.0 and then put your pressure as 69,000 kilopascal. My temperature can be seen in the same way. Make sure that your airfoil wall and set to wall and then DR2 cages match up. Set your operating conditions to zero pascals because we'll be using gauge pressure and not absolute pressure. Hit far field for your reference values and check your values over there. Set your values to second order because it gives you a more accurate result for your simulation. Let's now initialize it. So go into standard initialization, select far field and then verify your velocity in there. Hit initialize and then let's go into solve it. Check case. And go into the data file quantities if you want to import stuff. So I have Mach number in there, dynamic pressure and so on. This can be up to you. And then let's hit solve. So once it solves, then you can open your CFD post. Or you can also check your values over there in graphics. So you can see my Mach number distribution in this case. So go into CFD post now and then insert a new contour, Mach number. Select Mach number and then hit 101 for my number of contours to make it more detailed. You can see my Mach number over here. It's creating a, both an oblique shock and an expansion wave. And in part one, I did solve for the actual Mach numbers using compressible flow calculations with isentropic flow relations. So it does match up quite well with the simulation because of the fact that my Mach numbers with my calculation match, match up with these Mach numbers over here. Pressure can be seen in the same way because pressure is the inverse of velocity. So you will have a high pressure where you, where you have a low Mach number. So that's it for my video guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something about ANSYS CFD simulations. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know below. Keep in mind that I did go a little fast because of the fact that I do have a lot more ANSYS tutorials before. So if you're stuck on any of the steps, please watch them before you watch this video. This video is meant to be more of an intermediate tutorial. And with that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.